Are we rolling? Yes. Awesome. Okay, well, this is the No Named Religious Spiritual Podcast hosted by yours truly. My name is Luke. My name is Richard. So a little bit about us. Um, as I said, I'm Richard, Richard Glenn. Uh, I am a student in theological school right now, which is training to become a minister. Yeah, uh, my name is Luke. I graduated from college a little over a year ago, and I've been working for the church, the church that I go to ever since in video production, and I'm also an aspiring actor, so I do that on the side as much as I can. We are going to have a discussion posed to us or a topic of discussion. We're going to talk it out, and that's sort of the Using first Using kind of segment. our unique life background and also religious background to remark on whatever the topic is of the week, and we're going to go through that. And just kind of have a good time with it because yeah. people get so stuffy about religion and spirituality. I feel like a lot of the times I just want people to like relax and take it easy and like be okay laughing in a religious atmosphere. Because yeah. I feel like people think that's weird and it shouldn't be weird. Yeah. Like people, no one on the street wants to talk about God or spirituality, but it's a thing that everyone thinks about and it should just be like a part of normal life. Yep. It's like, definitely very taboo in a weird way. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super excited to do this. I'm not super excited to think of a name. Uh, <laughs> my, my favorite going name is Churchy Banter Boys. Churchy Banter Boys. Churchy Banter Boys. He already made a bunch of... I did make a bunch of graphics. It looks good. They, okay. do, look, they do look good. I'll put one up on screen. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, okay, good, good. Throw one up right here. Churchy right Banter there. Boys. If, if you're listening, uh, we're also doing a video portion of this podcast, so make sure you look us up. Um, and uh, see the video because it should be pretty cool. Yeah, We're also shooting in a pretty in dope location. Yeah. This is Bernathan Thrift Store, Bats for short. And uh, it is I love very it. much a thrift store. You oh, it's tell. the most thrift store you've ever seen. It's in a barn, a large barn. I'm drinking out of a mug with a little blue bird on it who looks very angry. Mine says Peredizo. Mm, Costa Rican. Very coffee. good accent. Thank very you. Accent. Wasn't racist at all. <laughs> <laughs> and about halfway through this show, we're going to switch it up and put on some fun clothes that we find in the thrift store. So it'll be new and fresh and funky every week. Yeah. So what are some other names we thought? That. There was Churchy Banner Boys. Um, there was... <laughs> <laughs> there was G's, <laughs> comma, us. <laughs> dot, like, oh, uh, Jeez, us. us. But, mm, oh, but, so we're trying to think of a name. If you have suggestions, let us know after the podcast. Maybe we'll have more clarity by the end of this. He also thought of the name God Gab. Godly gab. Godly gab. But that's like, it's so guttural. You yeah, know, it's there's so guttural. much G. It's too much. Something catchy, something fun, something fresh. Yeah. Um, but I think it might be helpful to talk a little bit more about what our beliefs are in a nutshell, which is a hard thing to do. Anyone from any religious background, whether they're Christian or Buddhist or Muslim or Jewish, whatever, there are a lot of uh, elements to every religion. And so it would take way too long for us to get into every specific detail of what we believe. But Richard, as a minister in training, can probably do a good job, not to put you on the spot or anything. <gasps> My uh, job, no. Can probably do a good job of explaining a brief overview of what we're about, and I will um, add in where I think necessary. So just to tell you briefly about our faith background, our beliefs, we're both in a branch of Christianity called the New Church. Um, it's a small branch of Christianity that has some really distinct differences that maybe we'll go into later. Uh, but it's one of nice my flavors. favorite, yeah, yeah, it's spicy. Uh, one of my favorite beliefs, or one of my favorite parts of this religion, is that I've never really felt like there are things that I'm not supposed to understand or not able to understand. Uh, there's not really a, an idea of divine mystery or like just having faith. It's very practical, practical, and very explained. Uh, and it really feels like I'm learning true ideas that are applicable to my life and are the Lord wanting to share the right way to live with me. And I just think that's really cool. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because my favorite thing contrasts with that a little bit. Yours is very like specific to the individual. And my favorite thing, what always brings me back to this religion particularly, is that we have a belief that anyone from any background, any belief, any life can go to heaven, that it all comes down to your personal choice and you living a life according to what you believe is true and good, that forms who you are and your afterlife. Because I always hated the restrictive idea of heaven and hell 
that came from a lot of like youth groups I went to growing up. Like so many of the like more stereotypical Christian organizations I went to basically said that if you don't believe in Jesus by the time you die, that you're going to hell. That just never made sense to me from just a, like a vocalization as- aspect. So my favorite thing about our belief is that anyone can go to heaven as long as they're living a good life and believing in good things. Yeah, just to put it practically, heaven is where good people choose to go. Hell is where bad people choose to go. Mm-hmm. And that's just very like, no one's sending you anywhere, which is really cool, that sort of self-empowerment of your spiritual life, I really like as well. Amen. And if you want to learn more about that, just go to www.satanictemple.com and you will learn everything you need to know. You visited a satanic temple recently. I did not. Yeah. Oh, that was, that's our boy Ben behind the camera. Behind the camera. I thought you went. He's a heretic. It's actually yeah. it's it's straight an activism down. group. It's not a church. And also, Ben behind the camera, I think, has a topic for us to discuss. Let's just only call him Ben behind the camera. Ben behind the camera. Ben behind that's the camera. The name of the podcast. That's his last name, behind the camera. <laughs> ben. Behind the camera, comma, Ben. Ben beat the camera. All right. So the one that I got for you this week nicely applies to what you're saying earlier on. Uh, it's this. Does God have a sense of humor? A lot of comedians or just people you know make jokes about things that are inappropriate. Is that wrong? Is that against religious ideas? People generally who are religious seem to think so. Uh, that I bump into in my life. Uh, does making those jokes harm us somehow? Is it against what God wants? Discuss. Hmm. Actually, I, I wrote a paper on uh, laughter and the religious views of humor uh, back in high school, I think. Because it was something I thought about a lot. Because I feel like so many, like, kind of, quote-unquote, upper-tier religious people are kind of stuffy. I'm like, is that yeah. is that the right way to be? Is it okay to, like, be a little loose and swear and have a good time and, I don't know, relax and be funny? Is that is that okay? And I have thoughts on that. I don't know if you have thoughts. Oh, I'm going to be a minister, and anyone who knows me knows that I Not rely on humor. Very, very, very serious. serious. Yes. Very serious. Deadly serious. Um, in high school, I did a little bit of stand-up comedy, uh, and it has plagued me ever since. Mm-hmm. You listen to this. If you have anything that stands out to you as funny during the podcast, if you want to comment and say, oh, Richard, you said this, that's comedy material. He loves to be told that. <laughs> quick, side, <laughs> quick sidebar. After you're a stand-up comic, even just one performance, like everyone a- likes to tell you what should be comedy material. So for like Guys, two he's just, years, he's practicing for a stand-up routine right now. Just let it out. Oh, I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> for like two years after I did stand-up comedy, I'd be in a conversation with someone, and I'd say like one funny thing, like in context. And they'd be like, "Oh, that's you should put that in your stand-up. That's comedy material." I'm like, really? I should put this half an hour conversation in my stand-up for that one. And that's pun when you I decided made. that God hates humor. Yes. And that really never laugh. No you're going to laugh. hell. But where does where does that line cross? <laughs> Because I think a lot of the time, uh, people think that um, most laughter or things that are funny uh, disparage people somehow. And that that is where a line gets crossed where humor isn't actually helpful. Well, I think there is an interesting, I think our current culture is seeing this line of humor in a big way with political correctness movements. Um, humor is allowed to say things now that they were never allowed to say in the past. Really? I feel like it's it doesn't. Like if you go back if you go back and watch like Eddie Murphy's stand up from nineteen eighty, oh boy. But like he says a lot of things that you cannot say today. Well yes, I was about to get to that. So there are a lot of I think Not to throw Eddie Murphy under the bus. I'm sure he's still He's a great coming guy. for you now. He's gonna watch this. He's like, what did I what did I do? Um it was a different time. Um no, it wasn't. Uh, so, I think there are some things that we're not allowed to say, that we are allowed to say in comedy now that people think is funny and aren't like, oh my, that was too much. But there's also a lot of things that we're no longer allowed to say. Racial tension is, is increasingly high. and But I think the change is good. Because I think where it was before was stuffiness with like some serious undercurrents of racism that was like, we can't make sexual jokes, but, you know, racism, 
that's probably fine. And now I think it's moving more to uh, sort of an open view on talking about sexuality uh, and all the things that go into that, but more more focus on how much racism is a real thing and how many people's lives it actually hurts. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's just more of a movement of as long as the dialogue and the humor is humanizing people and not dehumanizing people, that it's still kind of okay. Like we can, we can joke about um, and talk about things of a sexual nature or of a racial nature to some extent as long as it's still humanizing people. But as long as it's not actively trying with malicious intent to tear people down, then I think we're okay. Yeah, I think humor can actually be an incredible healer. Uh, it can really dis- dissolve tension in a miraculous way. But the problem is when the tension is from the uh, oppressing group to the oppressed group, that's not going to relieve tension. You know, in the civil rights movement, a white comedian making racist jokes about black people is not dissolving any tension. And I doubt it does today unless it's done in a tasteful way, I guess. So Um, maybe maybe that's one point where God does like humor, where it does dissolve tension. Because I think humor has this amazing ability to bring people together in a different sort of way, more than what you can just like sitting across the table and being like, hey, where'd you come from? What's what's your background? You know, if you can find Mm -hmm. something to bond over and laugh about together, like you show your affection within your humor and it's acknowledging some sort of shared truth that you have about a topic that you might have not noticed in this particular way, and that's why you see it in this different light. And so it's funny now, because it's different, and it's true, and you're sharing that with someone. And I think that really bonds people together and brings people together more than they would if they weren't laughing about something. Like, my fondest memories, and I'm sure everyone else's, like, best times with their best buddies are when you're laughing and having a good time, and you feel so close to someone when you're just, like, uncontrollably laughing about a situation. Mm Mm-hmm. What are, what's the hardest you think you've ever laughed? Huh. Mine's pretty easy, but it's a long story, and we don't have time for it. So oh, I wondered if you had anything else to talk about. Bummer. Yeah. Bummer. It was probably... Yeah. We went to high school together, to a boarding school. It was probably in the dorm together at some point. Oh, I have a specific dorm mem- memory that... Was it was with fun. Cody Smith? Yeah. Yeah, that might have been mine, too. It was with Richard, another person. Someone was full frontal on accident. Someone's snap pants got ripped off. Um, it was a great time. That, I, yeah, I, someone's. I have never cried laughing <laughs> as much as I did that time. Yeah, that was... And, like, even though it was a situation where someone could objectively look at it and be like, oh, you know, that's a, that's a crass um, experience, that situation brought everyone together more than it separated them in even a spiritual way. Yeah. Like, like as a person, I feel closer to everyone because of that shared experience. And I feel like looking at it that way and having it that way, I can't see a loving, sensible God being like, oh, that was a bad time to laugh. I just don't, it, that doesn't make sense to me. I'm happy to be proven wrong, but I don't think that that is what it is. Also, one really interesting thing that I have been looking at is the word has a lot of humor in it. I think there are a lot of things in the word that now because of translational and cultural divides we don't get mm. as well, but like jokes. Jesus was funny. Yeah. Like uh yeah. He ripped on people. Yep. <laughs> and the the Old Testament is actually full of puns. Really? There's just a ton of puns in the Old Testament. Hit me with but one. they only work in Hebrew. The story of Jacob and getting the spotted and spotted and speckled sheep. Okay. Those, the Hebrew word for that, oh, I might be butchering this, but the Hebrew word from that is like the, the Yaakov sheep, and Yaakov gets the Yaakov, hmm. and Laban gets the white sheep, which is Laban. Whoa. And so it's just like this little, this little word play that it does. Huh. I had no idea. And it's really fascinating. And like, but if you believe like, that every word in the Bible has meaning and purpose, then that specific story and context and specific words those have meaning too so like 
Maybe there's something there. I never, I never knew that. That's yeah, there's a lot of me. there's a lot of little like little plays on words, which is interesting. Yeah, I I think what it gets down to is where it's coming from and how it's received by people. Because as I said earlier, it's really all about you what you love, mm-hmm. and I think when you are making jokes from what you love and the people around you find it funny and can tell that you have love for people behind it instead of hate, then they'll be relaxed. Because I think the same joke can make people die laughing one minute told in one context and deeply offended in another context, depending on who says it, how they say it, what the context is. So... Like, I have a... But I don't think intent... Sorry to cut you off. But I don't think intent of the comic has much to do with it. Because the comic could have the purest intent. But someone hearing what they say could take it in a different way. Yeah, so I said uh, intent and reception. Yeah. Um, Because what it comes down to is you don't decide what things mean to people. Like, if you want to make a racial joke to someone and they have been deeply prejudiced... They've experienced deep prejudice in their life. You might not realize that, and they might not find it funny. Mm -hmm. But someone who is working on, you know, finding the humor in the situation and is trying to grow through humor and sort of normalize talking about racial divides and, like, differences in racial, racial upbringings could really enjoy a racial joke. Like, I have a friend of mine who always makes fun of me for being redheaded uh, and always makes a bunch of... And on top of that, always makes a bunch of jokes about feeding me wheat. I'm allergic to wheat. He's not. I hate you. I am. I'm a celiac. It's really a big deal. Um, and we're, I mean, we're, we're both redheads, actually. We're, we've gotten yeah. loads of ginger jokes throughout our lifetime that I actually yeah. used to be super offended by. Yeah, you, you, hated, you hated the word ginger. I did, when you were I younger. hated the word ginger. He was deeply offended by it. What? He's like, it, it just sounds so, it's our word though. We're allowed to say it. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> I've evolved. I've grown. Um, well, so I have a friend who is Hispanic and I was, this is going to be a joke I made. Maybe you'll be offended by this. Uh, but I was helping him. We were, we were both helping a mutual friend move. Uh, and he was making fun of me for being fragile because I couldn't eat wheat. And also look at his bones. And look at me, I'm tiny. And I was trying to lift a couch, and I was like, oh, this couch is so heavy. And he's like, well, maybe if you could eat wheat, you'd have some muscles. And I was like, well, like, heavy moving's like, manual labor's in your blood, though, so. <laughs> and he loved it. And I, would, I wouldn't say that joke to someone who would be offended by it. I say to the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's the kind of relationship we have and a rapport that we've set with each other. And so it came from a place of me really appreciating him and, you know, understanding he's actually uh, Puerto Rican. He's Puerto Rican, right? And Mexican. I have no he's idea who you're talking about. Jose. Oh, okay. He's Puerto Rican and Mexican? Uh, no, he's Nicaraguan. Nicaraguan and Mexican. Nice try, though. Racist. I am racist. Dang it. Um, but I think, I think a big thing there is that humor comes from a place of understanding. Like if you just met a person of a different race or a different uh, religion or ethnicity off the street and just made a joke to them about that thing, that would not go over well because you don't know that person. But if yeah. there is a person from a different background and you're good friends with them and you have a rapport and you know how the, the relationship you already have, humor can emphasize that relationship and expand it in ways that might seem to an outsider as something that's disparaging. But between you two, it's something that actually bonds you together. And there are, of course, times when things go too far, and hopefully in a good relationship or good friendship, like you'd work that out. But I think it comes back to that understanding, and that's what can build with people. But I, I think one of my questions that came up for me during this and what I've been thinking about is what kind of, like, can you make jokes about God? Like, can you disparage God in a friendly way and have that be humor that's okay? Because I feel nervous just saying that. (laughs) But I don't know if that's because of how I was raised or things I grew up with. But to me, the immediate answer is no, no, no. 
I like, think it's I think it's really interesting. I often talk about one thing I like to say. This is going to have some biblical background to it, but the story of the cross mm-hmm. and the Lord's last words on the cross when he says, "My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?" is actually a lot of people don't know this. He's that's a quote. Uh, he's quoting Psalm 22, which starts, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's one of the Davidic Psalms. And it has lines in it like, uh, A congregation of the wicked surround me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Uh, at one point it says, They pierce my hands and my feet. Hmm. It's a, a, a very, very clear prophecy of the crucifixion. And so right as he's dying, he quotes to all the people that have literally memorized the word, quotes Psalm 22, to basically be like, hey, look around, see what's happening. This is Psalm 22. And I like to call it the greatest mic drop in history. (laughs) Because he's just about to die, and right before he dies, he's like, hey, you people that know the whole Bible, this is this prophecy coming true. Boom. And then he dies. And I think that's pretty, yeah. like, uh, I realize that that's, that's humorous, but it's also really cool. That's powerful. Like, that's, that's, that's there's dope. extreme power in there. And I think calling it the greatest mic drop in history makes it something that people can feel comfortable with and ha- start a dialogue about and engage with. Where a lot of people, if you talk about, let me tell you this about this thing in the Bible and how it's quoted and different, they're like, oh, you can get religious stuff out of here. I'm like, let me tell you about how this guy was did, did the greatest mic drop in history. And now they're like, oh, apart from your religious belief, this is a cool story. And they want to engage with it. And I think that's where comedy can come into religion and make it really useful. Because people use comedy in every aspect of life to make people want to pay attention. Because as you said, comedy is a connector. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes people comfortable. Yeah, it makes people comfortable. It's a connection of things that both people see as true. Um, but when it's devoid, when religion is devoid of it, it comes across as dull and, well, humorless and boring. And there is a reverence that's important toward the word, but that doesn't mean that there can't be a lighthearted appreciation of what the Lord has created. And I so think if, for people who don't grow up with that like reverence and knowing that that reverence is important, why do you think that it is? The reverence? Yeah, like why is it important to not like disparage the word? Why? Why does that make it worse? Um, for me personally, it makes something that is incredibly powerful to me. Certain certain ways of making jokes about it in a disparaging way cheapens it. Uh, makes it feel like it doesn't matter. Um, normalizes it to something just commonplace when I think those big things that do guide our lives, whatever they are, should hold a special special place in our heart and like physically in our homes. Because there is a relationship between our internals and what we see, like what we interact with the externals, the physical things. I think keeping some sort of reverence there is important. Like I, the kid in me still like doesn't want to like place things on top of the Bible. And stuff because I think it's it's I, I can only speak personally, but for me a good reminder that this thing is really important and to treat it with respect helps me in my mind and in, in my soul treat things with more respect and more reverence. So then it's like the same idea as like you wouldn't breach uh, a really rough subject or like someone who struggles with like mental illness. You wouldn't like go up to them and start cracking jokes about t- depression because you know it's important to them. And the idea is like then the Bible should be like important to everybody. Yeah, yeah. And I think if you, yeah, that offense. But also I think an example for me is I, at one point, someone told me a very, very off-color joke about the resurrection uh, and laughed about it and I cringed about it because it was, first of all, just like really, really off-color, like very inappropriate. Um, But... The sad thing is when I'm trying to learn about religion and we're talking about the resurrection, 
this really crude joke plays over and over in my head and is very, very distracting from Mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to see how powerful this moment in history was, in my opinion. It was a very powerful moment in history. And all that's in my head is a dirty play on words. And so that's a reason that I don't like to joke about the word in certain ways. And I think that gets back to what you were saying about whether it's disparaging or just sort of finding natural humor in. Because I don't think all humor has to break down and despair. It's like there can be humor that builds things up together or, or jokes about something in a respectful way. Like it doesn't have to deface something or take away from the sanctity of your specific religious figure yeah. to be humor. Like humor doesn't need that. Like if you take, if you take sort of stand-up comedy as an example and look at people that do situational humor, situational humor is often not disparaging. It's just sort of like, look how funny the world is. Like a... Look at these little oddities or yeah. things. There's a... Uh, what's that? There's yeah. a Seinfeld joke about why... Grand Central Station needs those push. Grand Central Station. Grand Central Station <laughs> needs those push uh, faucets. Like someone's gonna just turn on all the faucets and go running out of the building with their hands in the air. Like I turned it on full blast. Like and I, I always found that a very funny joke, but it's not like no one's being put down by it. It's just like why does this? What is this weird thing? Like you can't use that faucet. We all relate on a co- co- common problem we have. Easy for you to say. How about common problem we have? I think, uh, and if we think about our experiences with comedy, with things we think are funny, how many times like you or us sitting alone in a room listening to like a comedic podcast or watching a funny YouTube video or something, how many times alone are you going to watch that and laugh out loud to yourself? For me, very little. I might chuckle at something if it's super funny, but I can appreciate it as funny, but I won't laugh. But if you're surrounded with other people watching a comedy show or watching a funny movie, I'll be like 90% more likely to laugh out loud because I'm having this shared experience with other people where we're all bonding over this thing that we think is funny and like having that experience and building each other up with it. And I think that's a, an indicator of how humor is a good thing and things that break down or tear down something and, and hurt you inside. That's not humor then. I think comedy and humor is what builds up, and dark humor is something different because no one wants to cringe after hearing a joke or feel bad about their religion or their race or whatever. I do want to point out that you said the phrase laugh out loud, and I feel like what, the institution of the word lol has ruined the phrase laugh out loud. So all you were thinking was lol the whole time? Yeah, dude. I can't, I have to, you had a great point right there. I couldn't and get that. And running through your head was just lol, lol, lol. Yeah, lol. I, I, got, I, can't, I can't lie. I've been getting into this fun new thing recently where I text out lol but in all caps so that it really does like a stark transition to like, oh, yeah, that was really funny. Lol. And I, th- I, I think it's great. He's the only one that likes it. I really enjoy it. <laughs> Well, let's uh, no, go put on some Wait, outfits. Well, put on some outfits after I tell you a joke. Okay, I was trying to think right. of it this whole knock, time. Knock, knock. No, I'm telling you. Oh, that. sorry. It's not a knock, knock joke. So Jesus walks into a bar, right? He goes up to the bartender, and the bartender rolls his eyes because he's going to order his usual, which is just water. And he turns it into wine, and he doesn't pay anything. I feel like you should have left it at. There's not well, really a there joke. Wasn't there wasn't a joke there, but I was thinking of like the joke punchline. the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm working on the punchline, okay? Boo. I'm working on the punch wine uh, oh, because there, there's a water to wine joke in there somewhere, and I need to find it. I thought that was a like a joke someone funny made. <laughs> see, and that, see and that's not human to me because that hurt me. Okay, oh, that punch. broke me down. So I <laughs> resent him. <for> that. <laughs> if you're watching this right now, you can tell that we have changed into some some goofy gag outfits. And, yes, um, Richard. Looks like a 52-year-old man who whose proudest achievement is that he's the lead DJ at his roller skating rink. Oh. That's it. Okay. I was going to say I look like a, well, obviously, a peewee soccer ref. Who takes it too seriously. Well, I was going to say who quickly has to leave his job to moonlight as a newsy stripper. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> But he uses his influence from being a referee in his yeah. routine. 
Well, it's, you know, to command respect. I feel like He's the stripper, a ref still. I feel like the stripper part comes more from your goatee than anything else. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's what I was going for. Oh, okay. Interesting. I think Interesting. you look like Richard Simmons' little brother who didn't make it. <laughs> and so he went into business and has very short arms. <laughs> Disproportionately short arms to how broad his shoulders are. I'm swimming. So we're going to be followed by a nice aerobic lesson by him. Yes. Following Get up now. We're going to, I'm going to lead you in some Thai bones. And squat. And squat. And squat. <laughs> You've never watched Richard Simmons. This is why you didn't did. make it. He did a lot of this. Oh. Wow. Well, we made that was Thai bow. <laughs> you are ever two, do Thai bow? Those are two thoughts? very distinct things to mix up. What? Thai bow and Richard Simmons are very similar. No. Yes. Thai bow is like Wayne Brady in 19... 19- 84. Have you seen Wayne exercises. Brady and Richard Simmons? Well, yeah, they look different. I'm saying their routines are very similar. We're going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to watch that. Um, yeah, that, that's what I had for you. What, what do you have for yourself? Because I get something for myself. I get something for you. Oh, I, I have like closeted gay mob member who on the weekends loosens up. Hmm. That is a very thin closet door. <laughs> <laughs> I said loosens up on the weekends, okay? So this is your weekend look. This is my weekend outfit. Okay. This is my day wear on the weekend. Okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah. If you want to feature your clothes on our podcast, which is named... <laughs> that. <laughs> B-P-H-H-H-H. Yep. No, there has to be the inhale beforehand. Inhale. Our podcast... <laughs> <laughs> Good luck looking that up. Asterisk. Feature your clothing asterisk. line here. Um, yeah, so do we want to finish up on humor and God, and what God likes and what God doesn't like? No, we want to move on to questions. Oh, we're going to move, oh, we're move on to questions? Yeah. Um, Point is, we're going to move on to questions from the audience, and I think we need to shed more light on that situation. Benjamin? No, 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 that was your cue to turn on the light. No, I'm going to do it on my own, Luke. No, that was such a good segue. No, Luke, I have a great bit. Okay, 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 I'm sorry, I'll take it back. But we are moving on to questions from the audience. Actually, no, let's do your bit. <laughs> <laughs> my bit was pretty good. <laughs> see, now I'm scared that my bit will never well, come up. We're going we're gonna to figure that out. We're going to yeah, see. Well, okay, okay, let's we're go. We're going to hope as a group that it does. All right. <laughs> the question is, seems like a lot of religious people, maybe the religions don't say this, but they act in a way that discourages getting involved with enjoying yourself, like partying or drinking. Uh, or dancing a lot. Is, is that something that I should be worried about as a, a person living in the world? It seems like all those things are fine and are pretty constructive, um, but maybe they're not. I don't know. TLDR, is having too much fun a bad thing? Is that the question? Yeah, basically. But specifically, they're asking about like drinking, those dancing, activities. Those kind of drinking, things. dancing. Like the, the traditional hey, even like things. smoking a little bit. Is that bad? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. My opinions are, yes, immediately. Terrible. You're How going dare to hell. you? Ben, you're going to hell for asking that question. <laughs> oh, it's for my listener. Yeah. Ben, you're behind the camera. <laughs> uh, my short answer is, anything to excess is bad. As much as going out and partying and drinking can be excessive and can take over your life and lead you down a path that might not be good, um, you can also go down many other different paths that might be seen as good, like studying. You could study all the time and just not become a person. And then that's leading you down a path that's not that great. So anything to excess can, that can take over your life is a bad thing, I think. You need to be well-rounded because that's who we are as people. We have different experiences and we need to be more holistic than just partying and drinking. But yeah, it's a fun time. So a little bit here and there, not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad idea to go to parties and enjoy yourself and, and have alcohol. Well, and um, I think a lot of people, sorry, I was about to steamroll you. Yeah, you were. I was, I was ramping into a story. Oh, oh. I remember there was one night where, so anyway, like I was saying, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Now I know how it feels. Um, a friend of mine and an acquaintance of mine. So one of my best friends since childhood and then someone I didn't know that well, but was starting to get to know, went out to a bar and we were there until like, Four in the morning, long after the bar had technically closed, and we were like the only people left there, and we all had to be at church the next morning, 
because there was an event happening that we were all going to. And I remember that night to this day. And I remember like waking up the next day and rolling out of bed and dragging myself to church. And then after church, seeing them like across the lawn and being like, oh, someone who understands (laughs) what I'm going through. And just that going through that and having so much fun with them the night before and just talking about all sorts of things all through the night. And then luckily we were all walking distance of the bars. We all just sort of stumbled home at the end of the night and it was so much fun. And like, I talk about it to this day with these two people and creating those memories in a party atmosphere is so, so beneficial and uh, such a powerful way to make a connection with someone that lasts forever. And I liked the, the, uh, comparison or what's the word juxtaposition is the word. I like the juxtaposition of going right from that to church the next day. And yeah, I went to church the next day and I enjoyed being at church and enjoyed seeing people after church. And I was not a bad person for having done that. But the night before I didn't like feel like, Oh no, I shouldn't show up at church because people might've known that I was drinking last night. Like, I, I think that it, I did a good thing when I got to know people and made a connection. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, again, I think it comes back to like what you're doing with your life. Um, and I think, yeah, like, like what you said, that can really distract if that's all you're doing because, you know, it is fun to go to parties. Parties are fun. That's why they're parties. People host them specifically to be fun. <laughs> um, But if that's all you do and you just constantly chase that, first of all, you're not going to be doing anything useful with your life. And second of all, you're not going to feel fulfilled. You're going to be constantly chasing something. They're a good break from what you're doing that feels fulfilling. Tap me in. Tap me in. Here's the thing about parties. Parties can be great. Parties can be bad. Parties are bad when you go to a party to lose yourself because you want to escape. Escapism at all is a bad thing because you're just prolonging the things that are actually going on in your life. So if you're going to a party where you're like, okay, yeah, there's going to be drugs there, there's going to be alcohol or whatever so that I can just not feel what's going on, no, that's a bad thing. But if you're going to a party to hang with your friends and have a good time and have experiences and you create memories, that's awesome. Yeah, go for it. Of course. No question. Yeah. That's my basic thought. Yeah, I think that's right on. Is there a difference between escaping and taking a break? Yeah, I think I you have think to be smart is. about the difference between escapism and taking a break, though. Because a lot of people, I think, can trick themselves and say, like, oh, I just need to take a break when, really, they're just escaping something. So I think that's a slippery slope. Yeah, I think everyone needs time to sort of get their energy back. And people do that in different ways. I mean, some to people... recharge. Yeah, everyone needs to recharge in some way. And so I think what it comes down to is being being honest with yourself. I think no one's going to lie to you more than you are. Mm. Yeah, it all just comes down to... I think we've talked about it enough. Yeah, that, They know what's up. Be honest yeah, with yourself. You know, be honest with yourself. Because I, I, you know, you know, you know the truth. Just be so honest like, with yourself. Like, what are the positive things? What do you get out of it, like, in a good way? Oh, <gasps> like, Ben, stay behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, 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 I mean, the we, first we one's fun. About... And fun is... There has been in the history of religion a lot of movements against having fun. Which is not true. Jesus had fun. Straight up water into wine. He was like instant party. Yeah, he was at a reception for a marriage. And marriages at that time lasted like three days. They were at least like sometimes a week. Mm -hmm. There were days of partying through the night and falling asleep where you were and waking up to party more and celebrate a cool thing that was happening. A marriage between two people. So if you're not partying for three days, you're not following the Bible. Yeah. You're not even married at that point. What would Jesus do? Party for three days. <laughs> Can we keep that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's leave it in. <laughs> I'll keep that. I partied for like three days when Justin got married. Nice. I was, yeah, I was a, I was a wreck. But yeah. dialing it back, um, I think we need to refocus how we think of religion and having fun. Because I think a lot of people growing up in conservative households, whatever your religious background, can sometimes tend to think 
oh, my religion doesn't want me to do these things, to go to parties, to drink, to have fun with people in this sort of way, because that's not what religious fun is about. But I think we just need to flip that basically on its head and be like, yeah, let's go and have fun and have fun be a basis for things, but let's bring our morals and our ethics with us into that atmosphere. So that, yeah, we can go and have fun, but let's not be dumb about it. And let's not um, use that as an excuse to forget about our background or our morals or any of that sort of thing, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. I, I remember a time that a bunch of people were at my fiance's house and we all were drinking and started singing a bunch of religious songs that I we, still have a video saved from that. <laughs> we were that singing we church hymns with. just blasting. We were just blaring out some banger <laughs> church hymns. Some real they are winners. Some bangers, dude. Um, they were modeled after like like marching music. Yeah. Those those thump, dude. Yeah, they do. Mm. Um, and there are so many positive experiences that can come from things like that. And those have to be, yeah, like I said, additional things. But I still remember a time stumbling with you back um, like in the woods with a, a glass container of this terrible mixed wine. It was MD 2020 orange. And it was so bad. Was that not the blueberry one? Oh, no, that was the blueberry one. That was the that blueberry. Was blue we raspberry. got orange later. <laughs> we split. <laughs> yeah, Ben, we went back and got another bottle. <laughs> It was like eight dollars. So eight dollars for this MD was, blue raspberry wine. It was a classic Luke David move. I was like, should we get like a bottle of liquor? He's like, this bottle of wine. How about bottom eight shelf? Eight dollars. And I was like, all right. And it was nice. Well, and that, well, it was bad, but that shared experience was so fun, and at the end of the day, it brought us up in our friendship. Like it yeah. didn't. It wasn't a bad experience, and I don't think things like that. I don't think God looks down on experiences like that. To me, that just that doesn't make sense with what I've studied, what I've learned about my religion and my personal beliefs. God wants us to share things with other people, have those experiences, and be okay having fun. Because we need to have fun. Like, that's such an essential part of humanity. And we can't neglect that just so we can go and study the Bible all the time. If all we did was sit down and study the Bible, we wouldn't be living a life that God wanted. Because we have to form relationships and love people and act on that and participate in the world participate in fun things that raise people up and make memories like that's what humanity is all about with studying the bible and with doing those religious activities but you need that combination so if you're questioning that don't be afraid of going out and having fun don't be dumb bring your morals and your ethics with you but go out and have a good time go dance go party go drink a little bit it's okay yeah those are my thoughts luke that was sorry i got passionate for a second there those are some great ideas (laughs) <laughs> Wait, center that so it's just above my head. I think it pretty. I then think you go it, to the left or the right. I like it. I'm behind, <laughs> yeah. I'm behind the camera. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Ooh, fair weather Ben over there. Fair weather Benny boy behind the camera. And it's getting longer and longer. Should we wrap it up? Should we do an outro? Sure. Cool. You stand there like that. <sighs> outro. I didn't hate that. <laughs> you can see if there's anything usable there. We'll wait for you. Hold on one second. Yep. Are you almost done? He's almost done. Yep. He's really thirsty. <laughs> oh, you're a mess. <laughs> he spilled that all Thanks over Thanks for himself. tuning in. See you next time. That was, that was a terrible one. <laughs> we, we he's, not, he's slurping water for a minute. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Guys, thank you for turning... Thank you for turning. I just thought of a, I just thought of our name, and I'm gonna. We'll see if it works. Okay. Smash that subscribe it's button. Smash that subscribe <laughs> button, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to our first podcast. We were really excited to make it. I had a yeah. blast. Yeah, I had a blast too. And I hope I'm that, very warm. I'm so hot. I hope that it was a fun time for you, and also maybe you thought a little bit about some different things. But uh, make sure you tune back next time for the next episode of. Thrift shop spirituality. Nah. Dang it. Really? I thought that was a <laughs> It's bad. fine. It's like, yeah. But it's, yeah. Not, it's not, I still like Churchy Banner Boys. <laughs> it's like a six and a half. Thrift shop. Yeah. The one stop shop at your thrift shop. Spirituality. spirituality. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Good enough. <laughs>